What is going on y'all? My name is Spice of the Spice Camp Fish. Today I've got a review for you guys. So a couple of weeks ago I was down at Shields with my buddy Max. We were just going to go look at some stuff. He ended up picking up a whole bunch of random stuff. I myself tried not to spend a whole bunch of money there. But of course I had to pick up one or two things. So while I was down there I noticed I actually had the new uh, Guggen Squad clickbaits in stock finally. This is the first time that I've ever seen them in person. I've seen them online obviously and in everybody's videos ever since they came out. But now, if you guys don't know, the clickbait is actually the Coogan Squad's rendition of like a bladed jig or a chatterbait. Uh, very similar, uh, has that oversized plate on the front. It's got that big, long uh, wire on the front, which we'll get into a little bit later. But they're designed to be worked very similar to a bladed jig or a chatterbait. They're not supposedly a chatterbait or a bladed jig. They're considered something else. I'm not really sure they have their own little classification of whatever kind of bait this is considered. But more or less, it's essentially a bladed jig. So again, I got two of these. I got this one, which is the summer crawl color. Uh, it's a three eighths ounce size. And then we also got one in a green pumpkin that was a half ounce size. So yeah, I took them down to one of my favorite little ponds where I like to throw a chatterbait at and uh, tried to get on a few fish, see if we could test these out. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let's get right into the action. All right, out here trying out these click baits. I've got both of them tied on two different rods. Gonna start out with this half ounce green pumpkin one. See if we can't get bit. So full disclosure, I have tried to film this video twice. I caught, I think, six or seven fish on this clickbait, so I know they work relatively well. Uh, but I have also, you know, formed some opinions about them, which we'll get into. But the reason you guys haven't seen this video sooner is because every single time I come out here and film, for whatever reason, my computer, my GoPro, decides to. Uh, have an SD card error, so there might be something wrong with my SD card, but it seems like it only happens here, and I don't know why. But yeah, so I came out here and filmed one with Max. We both caught fish on these clickbaits, and uh, he seems to like them. And then I filmed another one where I came out here by myself and I caught some more fish on the clickbait, and uh, all those clips are gone now, so we're doing this for the third time. <laughs> So like I said, we're gonna get into my opinions in a little bit, but for right now, I'm just gonna kinda concentrate on doing some fishing, see if we can't get a bite or two. Some pretty good chatterbait conditions right now, the bladed jig conditions. Cloudy, overcast, a little bit of wind. Relatively clear water, which isn't a good or a bad thing. I kinda like chatterbaits in a little bit more dingy water than this, but it should still work, especially this green pumpkin one is still pretty natural, so. I'm sure we should be able to get bit on it. Oh, there's a bite. Got one. Oh, he popped off. Oh, man. All right. Well, that was definitely a bite, though. He hit it hard too. Freaking tapped it. I don't know what that was about. But it was the first cast after the spot switch. So that's kind of a good sign, I guess. All right, so the first thing that I notice about this bait is it's not the most weedless thing ever. Um, the, this big arm in the front kind of gets in the way of that. A lot of chatterbaits just have that little thing in the front of it that just kind of, I don't know, make the vibration, but they're not really all that big. So they don't get caught up in grass super easy and you can usually rip them out of the grass if they do. But this one has that big old wire in the front, so it's not super weedless. Plus that oversized blade just kind of catches up in the grass a little bit easier. Also, you guys might have just noticed right there, I had to pop the blade back into place. Sometimes the blade on this kind of gets out of whack or it gets moved out of place. Uh, it's supposed to look like this, where the blade is in front of these three little beads down here and the whole blade is behind this little wedged bent bit of the wire right here. But sometimes it'll move up past this little bend and then the blade won't run right or it won't really chatter at all, honestly. 
and also sometimes this bottom bit comes off for whatever reason which just happened but you just have to kind of push it back into place it does take a little bit of uh, pressure <laughs> but they do go back into place the right way also i hear a lot of people have issues with them rising uh, they do actually rise up in the water pretty fast uh, a lot of people get annoyed about that because they like to burn chatterbaits over the top of grass or over structure or cover and i get that but the way they actually designed this bait was to be fished slow they didn't design it to be burned or fished quickly like you would with like a normal chatterbait or a zeman or a jackhammer or whatever they designed it to be able to be slow rolled try and leave it in the strike zone longer i guess and uh, try and get like more lethargic fish to come and hit it so you don't have to move it as fast and those fish have more of a chance to look at it and you know decide they want to eat it also if you guys are having an issue with it still riding up too high you can kind of bend the blade out uh, either bend it towards the top or the bottom uh, and just try and tweak it to make it run right for whatever depth of water you're fishing it did take me a few minutes to get it uh, dialed in the way that I like it, but now that it's kind of dialed for this water or like the depth that I'm fishing, uh, it seems like they're running all right. That weedless thing is, uh, or lack of being weedless, is really the, the big killer, I think. A lot of the times people like to, like I said, rip chatterbaits out of grass and can't really rip this one too well. It just kind of gets bogged down in there. Oh, there's a bite. Got one. Got a fish. Hopefully this one doesn't come off. Come here, buddy. He's down in the grass. Get out of that grass. Where's he at? Oh, there he is. Not a very big one. Probably about the average size out here. A little pound and a yaffer. Nice, though. First fish of the day. First fish back in Colorado for me, actually on that little clickbait very nice just got a uh, cajun lures bayou bug as the trailer but nice little fish kind of marked up on the back a little bit but very pretty nice all right bud appreciate it see ya you're good you can go <laughs> all right one fish on the clickbait so now you guys can see it does actually catch fish it was also the first uh, long cast that I made out on this point over here. There's like a little point that you guys can kind of see with the reeds, but it gets a little bit shallower. And uh, that was the first time I cast it across it and was rewarded with a little fish. All right, so now I've gone over kind of like the negatives about this lure. Those are the things that I notice that I don't necessarily like. If you were to fish it straight out of the package, uh, or just really things that you want to keep in mind. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the things that I like about this lure. Um, so it does chatter, which is good if you're fishing a chatterbait or a bladed jig. It does make some good vibration in the water. And I think that has to do with that oversized blade. Uh, whoa. Something was right in front of me and I didn't even see it. That's sketchy. <laughs> But yeah, so it definitely chatters. The blade definitely works, which is always good. I also like the hand-tied skirt. I think that's gonna last for a long time. I don't know if you guys can see that down there. There's a little wire they actually hand-tie that on, which I like. I always like hand-tied skirts. They make your bladed jigs or skirted baits last a lot longer than just that standard rubber band. The head is super lifelike. The colors that they offer are pretty good. Not the most amazing things I've ever seen, but they, they look pretty good. This one's just the green pumpkin one, but as you can see, it's not just green pumpkin. It's got a little bit of brown in the skirt as well. And, uh, oh, also the head has some good detailing to it, which I like. It makes it look a little bit more lifelike. I don't know how much that actually matters, but uh, makes it look a little bit more lifelike. <laughs> got that little eye with the Guggen Squad logo on it, which I think looks pretty sweet. 
Oh, and they also have a double bait keeper, which is nice. Helps you keep your plastics on there for a little bit longer, make them last a little bit more. So you're not going through like four or five different packs of plastics, but you gotta make sure when you put your plastic on, you put it on the right way the first time. Cause if you have to like back it out and then put it back on, then it rips out the plastic because of that second bait keeper on the top. Especially anything with like a wire, like one of those bent wire bait keepers that bend backwards into the plastic. Uh, you wanna make sure you put those on straight the first time because they'll rip your plastics up if you have to take them off and kinda play with them a little bit. But yeah, that'll definitely help you save some money, which is always a good thing. Especially because soft plastics do tend to get ripped up pretty easy. Oh, there's a bite. Oh, that was crazy. I like popped it and saw him freaking wake on it. Dang it. I don't know what that was about. I like popped it super hard. I don't know if you guys saw that, but when I popped it, this fish came out and reacted to it. Hmm, strange. Well, that's usually what I like to do with a bladed jig. This one just doesn't seem like it does the right thing when it comes out of the grass, but I think that one, I just might have hit him in the face or something. Ow! Jesus. Well, I can tell you the hooks are sharp on these. Although, I don't know why I lost those two fish, but... Hooks are definitely sharp. I have stabbed myself twice today, and uh, I am bleeding in both of the spots, so. Definitely some sharp hooks. I think they're must-add hooks, are what they use on these. Ooh. I broke off. I got bit right there and I broke off. You're kidding. Look at this. This is how much line I had out. Less than, less than 20 feet. He bit me right there and I broke off. God dang it. There he is. He wasn't even a big fish. Son of a bitch. All right. Well, I guess we'll tie the other one on. God damn it. Wow. Not a great day of fishing for me so far. Oh boy. All right, got the sunset crawl one tied on now. God dang it, that is so annoying. I feel kind of bad too. I don't like breaking off on fish. Now they got a, a bait in their mouth and I have no way of getting it out. Uh, whatever. I'll probably shake it. It's a pretty heavy lure. See, this is what I'm talking about with the, uh, the blade moving out of the place. So you can see this is kind of like free spinning on there now. For whatever reason, it just pops out. So you just got to take the blade and kind of push it back in front of these beads. I like to bend one side of the blade out. I find that works relatively well because then it opens that gap up a little bit. And then you just bend it back. There you go, good as new. Let's see if we can get bit now. Nope. God dang it. All right, well this is the other way, I guess. I apparently bent that wire a little bit when I hit the water back there. So I had to bend it back and then I moved the blade back out of place. but. It also goes up in front of this little clinched, cinched part. So again, you gotta just pop it back down there. Anyway, just see if we can get back to some fishing. <laughs> All right, here we go. Time to turn the day around. Had a crappy start, lost three fish and broke off, but we're back after it. We're gonna get it. 
Oh, Senko. Nice. The rusty ass hook in it. Gotta love it. I'll leave that on top of my back so I don't forget to grab that on the way out. Always clean up after yourselves, folks. Nobody likes a messy angler. But yeah, we got that summer crowd one tied on because that's the only one I have left. And uh, we'll see if we can find some fish. Oh, there's a bite. Got one. Yes. Another little one. Put another fish on the clickbait. Get in here, buddy. Probably about the same size as the first one. Actually, he's a little bit smaller. He's a little guy. It's a little tyke, but he crushed it. Definitely wanted the clickbait. There we go. Sweet. Appreciate you, buddy. Have a good one. Whoa, gave us a little show on the way out. Love it. All right, that's two fish. Could have been like five, but two fish in the clickbait. That little Boudin Bayou Bug. The Bayou Bug and Boudin. <laughs> Love that. But uh, let's see if we can find another one. That one was like way out in the middle over here. Just chilling over these grass beds. There's a fish. Got one. He's way out there. Holy crap. It was like way at the end of that cast. Jesus. Feels like a little bit better one too. Either that or he's in the grass. Come here, buddy. Get out of that grass. Oh, he's not that big. He's just got me in a ton of grass. <laughs> All right, fella. There we go. Number three, finally. Ooh, Jesus. But he's got a big old cut in him. That looks pretty recent. Sorry, bro. That wasn't me. Unless I cut him with my line somehow, but I don't think so. Huh. Weird. Anyway, appreciate it, homie. Feel better. Awesome. <laughs> There we go. I think that's number three. Awesome. I'm gonna fish over here for a little bit longer and then I got one more spot that I wanna hit. And then I think we're gonna call it. Ooh. I dropped it, damn it. She got dinged out there. Just grabbed it and let it go. It's happened a few times today. I bet they just don't like that color all that much. Water is a little bit too clear for me to want to be throwing this. I would obviously much rather be throwing the green pumpkin one, but unfortunately it broke off. So here we are. All right, that is it for the clickbait, folks. I will meet you guys back at my apartment for some final thoughts and opinions on this thing. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you back there. All right, so now just some last and final thoughts and opinions on this little clickbait here. So overall, not a bad bait. Uh, not the worst thing I've ever used, just not my overall favorite play to check on the market. Like I said earlier in the video, I really like to let that chatterbait get stuck down in the grass and then rip it out to try and get a reaction strike going out of some of these fish. And with this big oversized blade and that big wire on the front, you just can't really do that that well. Other than that though, if you're fishing this over like some sparse vegetation or maybe a little bit deeper vegetation, or if you're fishing it over like rock or like maybe some wood or something like some standing timber, this would work really, really well. Uh, I think it has some really good vibration to it. Uh, just not the best over some really thick, really shallow, or really topped out grass. They are a little bit pricey, but the components on them are really good. Double uh, wire bait keeper, I really like. I really like the hand tied skirt. Uh, I really like the skirt colors. They don't offer a ton of ton of colors, but the colors they do offer, they're pretty decent. Overall, uh, I probably won't buy a ton more of these, but I could definitely see myself picking up a few more in the future. 
Uh, again, not my favorite thing on the market. Definitely not my least favorite, but for the price, I think you can probably find a little bit of a better option. But again, this is really just my opinion. Uh, I just don't personally think this is amazing. Uh, some people obviously disagree with me. I'm sure there's some people who think this is the best bladed jig on the market, and they're perfectly entitled to that opinion. Uh, they probably have their own reasons for that. I just personally, for the way I fish, it isn't exact. Just for me personally, the way I like to fish a bladed jig ripping it out of grass, this is not the optimal bait for that. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you did, do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Let's me know you guys wanna see some more of these review style videos. On top of that, leave me a comment down below if you guys have anything else you want me to try out. I'd be more than happy to do a review on some more stuff over the coming year. Also, if you guys wanna see some more content from me, do me a favor, go down below, hit that subscribe button for me. I put up two new videos every single week, so if you guys wanna see some more content from me, that's gonna be the way you can do it. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Check out and recommend, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.